Hello everyone, my name is Faris al -Jajay. I am an electrical modeling and simulation specialist in the application expertise and electrical simulation team at Opal RT Technologies. I'll be presenting today how you can use the Raspberry Pi as a microgrid controller in a controller hardware in the loop simulation. At the end of this demo, I will be available to answer your questions, so please feel free to send in questions while watching the presentation. This project was implemented during my master's degree at McGill University. It was a collaborative project between McGill University, Opal RT Technologies, and Innovay. The work was done under the supervision of my McGill supervisor, Professor Geza Yosh, as well as the mentorship of uh, Dr. Sayed Qasim Ali, uh, team lead at Opal RT Technologies. First, I will uh, give a brief definition to what is a microgrid. I assume it's a topic that most of our audience is already familiar with. However, a microgrid is essentially a portion of the electrical grid that is capable of eye landing itself on its own and run autonomously. And that is aided by a dedicated microgrid control system of which functional requirements can be found in the standard IEEE 2030.7. A microgrid has a dedicated point of uh, interconnection with the rest of the electrical grid and has its own set of resources and loads that are mostly controllable so that uh, a microgrid can be allowed to gener uh, control the power flow through the point of interconnection, island itself, reconnect back to the power grid, and so on. In this slide, I will give a quick overview of the research related to the demo. However, I will not go into the details. For more information, you can check my paper, Eye Landing of a Microgrid Using a Distributed Multi-Agent Control System, which was submitted at the 2019 ECCE conference in Baltimore, US. In this work, a multi-agent system was designed to control the microgrid assets in a distributed fashion. So multiple types of agents were designed to handle uh, distributed energy resources, loads, and special elements in the microgrid, such as a switch at the microgrid point of interconnection. Furthermore, two types of algorithms were used to establish coordination. One is the consensus algorithm, and the other one that I presented in my paper is called the distributed priority queuing algorithm. A controller hardware in the loop setup was developed and validated to test a microgrid control system. The electrical power network is the Seagray Medium Voltage North American Distribution Benchmark Network. It was modified by adding a clear point of interconnection and thereby isolating it from the rest of the electrical grid and by adding various DRs throughout the network. So three types of loads were recognized, uh, critical, non-critical, and hybrid. Also, uh, two diesel generators and the energy storage system were controlled by three Raspberry Pis. Whereas the component itself is simulated with the microgrid on the real-time simulator, the controller algorithm was running on the Raspberry Pi. On the other hand, to complete the rest of the distributed control system, 10 load agents and uh, one POI agent were simulated with the network as virtual agents. IAC 6150 goose messaging were utilized to communicate between the Raspberry Pis themselves and between the Raspberry Pis and the real-time simulator. In terms of real-time performance, the model ran on a 60 microsecond time steps, where three cores were used for the power system, one core for the virtual agents, and one core for the asynchronous communications. However, it's worth noting that no consideration was taken at the time to optimize the real-time performance. Regarding the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model D Plus was used. It features a 1.4 GHz 64-bit quad-core processor, a dual-band wireless LAN, and Ethernet. On a side note, support for both Wi-Fi and LAN was quite handy because, as I will mention in the next slide, the communication network was an isolated setup. So having Wi-Fi was helpful to communicate directly with the Raspberry Pi. Python programming language was used to code the distributed control system algorithms. Uh, the hardware itself required minimal preparation, as all I had to do was install the Raspberry Pi OS, which was well documented. The user can also utilize freeware software for basic functions, such as using FileZilla to manage the SD card content and PuTTY to communicate with the Pi in, the, in case the user wishes not to uh, use a monitor, mouse, keyboard uh, setup. The microgrid communications were done over Ethernet, where an isolated network setup was created using VLANs to minimize the communication interference and delay. 
This replicates uh, a real power system network in a better way as power system communications are normally isolated. The IC6150 GOOS was set up on the Raspberry Pi with the help of the paper uh, I list uh, here, an open platform for rapid prototyping protection and control schemes. Um, however, it's worth mentioning that an easier and more straightforward communication setup between the Pis and the simulator would be to use uh, the UDP protocol. Uh, Opal RT, in fact, has written a knowledge-based article on the topic, which you can find if you can search for uh, any of the following keywords, RT Lab, Raspberry Pi, Python, and so forth. Finally, we arrive at the demo. I'll be showing four microgrid control scenarios. This showcases the ability of the CHI setup to test a variety of conditions. The first scenario will be concerned with the steady state operation in grid connected modes. The second scenario will be about planned eye landing of the microgrid where load curtailment will be utilized. The third scenario will show unplanned eye landing. And finally, by popular demand, a fourth scenario will be shown where we will simulate how can a microgrid go unstable from unplanned eye landing if the control system wasn't properly tuned. So now we switch to the demo of the distributed control system. And before I start uh, presenting the scenarios, let me first uh, give an overview of uh, the console running. So uh, you have a console as one of the subsystems in the real-time simulation. And, this, uh, and through this console, you can control many parameters in the microgrid and uh, you can use it to observe things. For example, uh, I'm getting these L matrices from uh, the Raspberry Pis in the real-time simulation. This presents that uh, diesel 1 is connected to ESS, diesel 2 is disconnected. And I have some grid controls here. I can control the commercial and residential loading, uh, how much solar output there is by emulating the solar radiation and how much wind speed there is and how much the required power exports at the po point of interconnection. I also have algorithm tuning, which we're going to play with uh, a little bit uh, later in the demo and some microgrid controls. So here we have the active power scopes in kilowatts, here the reactive power scopes, here we have the microgrid frequency, POI voltage and the phase difference. And uh, here we have the active power scopes of every load in the system, the blues being the non-critical loads. Okay, so first of all, I would like you to observe that uh, the requested power is at uh, 700 kilowatts and that's what it's being regulated at. And uh, I'm going to start by uh, plugging playing uh, diesel 2. So what we will observe now is that the diesel 2 is going to synchronize. The L matrix of diesel 2 is going to update as well as the L matrix of uh, diesel 1 and the ESS. And once it's connected, there will be a little bit of a fallback but then here, see, it's, it got connected, but then the uh, power from the grid, which is the one in red, is going to be re-regulated back at uh, 700 kilowatts. Now, uh, you see these uh, interruptions, these are just due to communication bandwidth requirements. For me to be able to show the real-time simulation uh, as it's going, so that, for example, when I uh, simulate later on unplanned islanding, I want to show you exactly how the frequency is varying uh, with the trade-off of having a little bit of a disconnection. So now I have connected uh, diesel 2. The, the, the L matrices got updated. Now I'm going to change the residential load in grid-connected mode to 80%. So these guys uh, stepped up and again uh, the grid picked up the load and now it is uh, again being regulated back. Diesel 2 is already generating its maximum power and uh, the ESS and uh, diesel are trying to regulate uh, the POI back to 700 kilowatts. Okay, so before I simulate islanding I'm going to trip diesel 2 again and show you how it will play out and how the L matrices are going to update accordingly. So, the diesel 2 is stripped. These, uh, the uh, distributed control system were able to update its connectivity matrix. 
but now actually uh, there is uh, not enough power by the ESS and the diesel one alone to fulfill the 700 uh, kilowatt requirements so it's going to be stuck there so we will have to continue the simulation as is now uh, the ESS and the diesel are already generating their maximum power output so if I am to uh, do planned islanding the ESS and the diesel cannot uh, cancel what remains of the POI so that calls for the need for load curtailments uh, and for load curtailment the distributed the, the load agents are going to distribute that remaining amount among themselves so that when I do planned islanding they will cancel accordingly and so that I will be transitioning to islanded mode seamlessly and I will be doing, doing this right now so islanding has been called first what remains of the var get cancelled and then here I am in islanded mode the uh, there was the exact load curtailment as I needed to cancel the power at the POI and now I'm in islanded mode and the frequency and the voltage is being regulated to their nominal values okay so uh, this is how much power I can provide in islanded mode and uh, now I'm going to issue reconnection so I can show you unplanned islanding scenario and for and for reconnection purposes uh, you, as we all know we need to synchronize the phase difference the POI voltage and the microgrid frequency the microgrid frequency and the POI voltage are already being regulated at their nominal value so what's happening now is that the phase difference is being cancelled by uh, the ESS and the diesel generator which are running and as we can see here it is uh, now converging to zero and at any time now it's going to okay it's just reconnected and uh, the loads are also reconnected back again to their nominal values okay so again now back to uh, where we started uh, the diesel and the ESS uh, regulating the power at the POI now I'm going to issue unplanned islanding now for unplanned islanding I'm going to trip the circuit breaker of the microgrid uh, without uh, requesting an islanding request so there wouldn't be intentional uh, load shedding specifically for islanding so what will happen is, is like an emergency dispatch mode uh, under frequency load shedding will need to occur and for that an algorithm is being employed that is other than the consensus uh, algorithm and what it does basically is that it lets the load agents agree on who is the least critical and the largest to shed first and here is the algorithm tuning for this so now I'm going to simulate that as you can see here unplanned islanding has been issued now and there was a very sharp frequency drop but then you, uh, the algorithm was able to save the system from microgrid instability by shedding the largest non-critical load if that frequency deviation would uh, uh, maintain then the next largest non-critical load would, would be shed and uh, so that is unplanned islanding with under frequency load shedding and now I'm going to uh, for the last uh, part of the presentation I'm going to issue uh, reconnection and then I'm going to do unplanned islanding but I will have faulty tuning of my algorithm and you will see how the microgrid will go unstable which is also important to be able to simulate so now the microgrid uh, got reconnected back to grid connected mode I'm going to just play with these parameters time to under frequency load shed I'm just gonna throw it as five seconds under frequency load shedding threshold is one second which are both ridiculous because usually the frequency threshold is uh, between uh, 0.3 and 0.7 Hertz and the time is uh, in the order of uh, 200 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds depends on which area you're at in North America so uh, for the last part we're going to observe how the system will go unstable and now I'm doing un uh, unplanned islanding and as you could see the system has went completely haywire with the demo being done we, we have reached the end of the presentation 
uh, we have arrived now at the questions period. So I invite the audience to submit any questions uh, if they haven't already, and I'll try my best to answer each question to the best of my knowledge.